Uh, let's now cross live to the UK leader, Young Voices, Jason Reed, to discuss a couple of the big stories of the day. Morning to you, Jason. Good morning, Christo. Um, let's talk about... Well, actually, we were just talking about these before the break, so I think we should start with them and the uh, European COVID protests, some of which are about lockdown restrictions, some of which are about uh, people being angry at the idea of the vaccine being compulsory. Um, what do you make of those? Are the media talking about them enough? What's your view? Well, the situation in the uh, in the continent has been erupting in recent days, especially ne the Netherlands is making the headlines today because of uh, riots and unrest in Rotterdam in particular in response to a three week uh, partial lockdown as a result of a spike in cases when the Dutch are protesting. You know that something has gone very wrong indeed. And we've seen, of course, similar unrest in uh, Croatia, Austria and Italy and other countries. We've not seen in this country, I'm possibly jinxing it by saying it, but we've not seen the spike in cases that uh, those other countries have seen, which have sent their governments into a little bit of a panic and uh, introduced some very unwelcome restrictions. Uh, but of course, at the press conference a few days ago, Boris Johnson was talking about a blizzard of COVID, like it was a weather front coming across Europe, uh, perhaps suggesting that he is anticipating a spike in cases in the UK in the same way as some other countries have seen, and it's unclear at this point what that would mean for the UK, whether he would be willing to impose restrictions again. He's been talking a lot about the need to protect Christmas, which is very, very close, just a month well, away. Well, the Christmas so that he cancelled last year, even after saying that he was protecting it. Exactly, yeah, there's a little bit of... Uh, I mean, is, is the narrative is... working with people anymore? I mean, because if you look at a lot of opinion polls, they still seem to point to the direction of the public seemingly... Uh, whether you believe these polls or not, wanting harsher restrictions. And fair play to Boris. There isn't much that I admire about Boris Johnson, but the fact that he has stood firm against going into Plan B and all of these sorts of, 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 of things that were mooted a couple of weeks ago, you've got to give him credit for that. But will he stand firm going forward? Um, and, and will we end up in another lockdown, do you think? Well, it's, there are different interpretations, aren't there? Because on the one hand, you're right, he has stood firm so far. On the other hand, last year he stood firm against that uh, month-long lockdown. But the problem was he stood firm against it for too long, left it too late, to the point that we then had to have a lot of harsh restrictions over the Christmas and New Year period. And that's what we want to avoid this year again. Uh, and so I think if we were going to have some level of restrictions, if we needed to have a three-week partial lockdown, it would be best to do it now so that we could get it out of the way. I'm not sure that there really is a need, um, but my concern is that we will see exactly the same situation in this country as, as we've seen in other countries like the Netherlands, where there's a very small spike in cases and the government panics. I don't think there's really any reason for that. We're not anywhere near the NHS being overwhelmed. So protect the NHS line is uh, not a good reason to lock down. The number of people in hospital beds is very, very small indeed, in last like, large part thanks to the the vaccine rollout so there isn't really a need to impose those kinds of restrictions but the government might panic if there are a few scary front pages with pictures of graphs with lines going upwards um and so we'll have to just keep our fingers crossed because we've seen Christmas won't be compromised. Uh, vaccine passports being introduced in wales and mm. it was the cinema chain cinema and co which have now been closed down temporarily by the uh, trading standards in wales for not introducing these vaccine passports. Are we going to end up, because um, you made a good point in the break, Steve, before we uh, came back, and you were saying that actually the, that the government making a threat about vaccine passports, even though they didn't actually bring them in in the most official capacity, though lots of venues have decided to off their own backs, um, that actually people are just still remembering the threat and it's making people dig their heels in yeah more it's the, been counterproductive that threat i think so this it's one of the uses of nudge theory i don't really understand that so maybe i shouldn't even bring it up but the idea that you threaten something to change behavior and then remove that threat well you've, if you've changed your behavior because of the threat it's almost as if it happened so i think they might be achieving their first goal 
But sec further down the line, it's going to cause the problems of actually doing it. So that I don't think we should be having a threat that we shouldn't have be threatened by the government anyway. So therefore, I think the government shouldn't say something without actually doing it. Don't but do you think we're going to end up with compulsory vaccine passports here in the UK? I don't. I'm still hoping that people think that vaccines are good. I, I think it would be an absolute mistake, Jason. I think the vaccines are good as well, but I completely agree with uh, with Steve. It's not the government's role to be telling us to be our nanny wagging wagging its finger at us and telling us here's what you should do and here's what you shouldn't and you misbehave so now we're going to punish you i think that following wales's example is a very bad idea uh, mark drakeford has been doing at some points during the pandemic exactly what you say he's been saying um if you don't obey the rules then cases will go up and we'll have to impose all these new restrictions the public don't obey the rules and then he imposes new restrictions the theory being well you can't blame me it's your own fault for going and socializing too much um but it just doesn't work i don't know what the, the science is behind this but people don't choose to change their behavior in that way people choose to change their behavior based on their own judgment we're not we're not stupid we're not sheep we can make our own decisions uh, without the government patronizing and talking down to us like and, and i will make the point that i've made many times before I, i'm also staggered that no one in the media no one when it comes to the press conferences no one at all that i've heard is asking the government where is the preparation with the extra nhs capacity required that you've had now over 18 months to come up with if cases do spike you know, all i want to hear from the government now is what they have done and what they've prepared for so that we never have to lock down again and I've heard not one of that. All we ever hear is it's cases and will we lock down, not cases and why won't we lock down. Exactly. Yeah, the government seems incapable of looking beyond the immediate term because it just gets so wrapped up in the current crisis, in the headlines of the day. And it means that if cases do spike, that then, as you say, they, they were unprepared. And so we have to panic. We have to protect the NHS at the last second by going into lockdown again. It could all be so easily avoided um, by doing a little bit more preparation, exactly as you say, now, just in case the worst happens. But I don't have much confidence that the government will invest time and resources in that anytime soon. OK, let's talk about um, more choices from the public, and that is the choice to potentially um, not vote for the Tories and the rebellion that Boris Johnson is facing from his own party i mean is the mask now slipping for boris johnson or those people in the tory government now realizing that yeah it was he was a great salesman to get brexit over the line but beyond that there ain't much substance going on worse there's actual corruption going on i think you're absolutely on the money we don't really know who boris johnson is or what he stands for this uh, the story is a, a poll uh, commissioned by the Sunday Telegraph on the front page today saying that 77% of uh, Tory voters are concerned that Boris has been too soft, in particular on the migrant crossings issue. And of course, there's been huge backlash, as you say, to the sleaze issue as well. I think it, it's exactly because of, uh, because of what you say. He was ushered to the position of leadership of the Tory party and of prime minister off the back of Brexit and Brexit now being a distant memory in terms of the parliamentary battles that we had over that in late 2019 and then we've had the covid crisis which has kind of delayed all of his plans it's unclear what leveling up means uh, it's unclear what building back better means when you take away all of that unclear stuff or the stuff that's already finished what's left when it comes to boris johnson's time in senior politics perhaps his big ambitious infrastructure projects but then the sunday telegraph also reporting that uh, johnson has been forced to shelve his plan for a bridge or a tunnel between scotland and Northern Ireland because it would be too expensive and technically challenging. He couldn't even he build said. a bridge between London and London when he was mayor. So I really don't think he was going to manage to build uh, a bridge between um, Scotland and Northern Ireland. I mean, these are just like ridiculous Boris sound bites, which have no substance or truth in them whatsoever. And I think the mask is slipping. I think that people are finally realising that they've elected a dud and that actually if the Tories are to have any chance of winning the next election, <laughs> that that they've got to ditch this man but the, the 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 question is will they do you think that someone will stick their head above the parapet bearing in mind that many of our politicians are completely self-serving and cowardly some aren't but many are certainly on the front bench they are what do you predict do you think we are going to see because if they're going to do it really is the next few months because they'll need a new leader to have a good couple of years run up 
to the election to make their mark and the like. And we're probably looking at an election within the next two years. So it is, you know, it's probably around this time that they need to start thinking about it. Do you think we're going to see Boris going into the next election? I think we will, I'm afraid, and I think he'll win it as well. And there's a lot of complacency going on within the government and the Conservative Party, uh, even with this dip that Boris has had in the polls, even with this public backlash over issues like channel crossings and sleaze, I think it's very unlikely that we're anywhere near a point where Boris Johnson is actually going to be pushed out of number 10, because it's only very recently that Labour have been making gains in the polls and no letters of no confidence have been sent in uh, in Boris Johnson's leadership. Um, the, I, I think I'm right in saying that no one in the last 100 years, no party has overcome an electoral deficit in one election cycle the size of the one that Labour suffered in 2019. So even if everything goes very badly for Boris between now and the next election, the likelihood is still that he will be able to lead the Tory party into that election and that he will win it and have another five years in government oh, and have another word. five years to make up his mind about <laughs> what he believes in. The thought of that, I just... Every time that buffoon is on television, I cannot believe he's our Prime Minister. But hey-ho, we are where we are. Uh, Jason Reed, thank you. UK lead at Young Voices. When we come back, 